Now this is my favorite part of Ward Acres. This is uh, the woodsy part along the eastern edge by uh, Pine Brook Boulevard. It's also pretty nice along the northern uh, edge of the park. It actually, it's hard to believe that it's, that it's in New Rochelle. It seems like it's uh, really part of the woods. It's certainly a lot nicer than uh, most parts of where, where I'm from, which is uh, Mount Vernon. And I'm pretty happy that I've been paying taxes to uh, uh, pay for the purchase of this land since 1972, uh, when I became a taxpayer. And that was uh, shortly after the uh, state issued uh, its bonds for the purchase of this park from the Ward family. I started using this park mostly because I thought that I wouldn't be driven out of it. Because since state funds had been used for the purchase, I thought this was a, a park that I was entitled to use. I was really very disappointed when the uh, city of New Rochelle uh, attempted to impose the, the high fees that they have, the discriminatory high fees that they have for non-resident dog owner use of the park. I hope that that situation can change. This is Hayek. Hayek. He's a seven-year-old standard poodle. What you're seeing here uh, are the oriental bittersweet and porcelain berry vines that are on the trees. And in the what ought to be an open area here, uh, you see porcelain berry and multiflora rose. Uh, multiflora rose is a really nasty uh, uh, rose bush that has actually wiped out three and a half million acres of pasture land in the United States. And uh, whenever you have kind of neglected space like this, it can easily take over. It was actually introduced to, uh, for erosion control and has gotten completely out of control. This is what's left of uh, Oriental Bittersweet. This one right here. And right by your hand, here, this is what's left of some porcelain berry. It's been removed. Uh, uh, well, the, the stem has been cut, which means that at least it's dead. It takes a long time before it actually dries up enough to come off the trees. A lot of what you're looking at on the trees close to the path, uh, the vines are actually dead because uh, we've been working to uh, cut off the, uh, the stems. As you look farther back away from the path where it's hard to get, uh, that's still very much alive and eventually those vines will tear those trees apart. Rosa multiflora, but there's also porcelain berry, that's this here. Porcelain berry grows both on trees and on the meadows. The uh, Rosa multiflora glow grows mostly in the meadows, but it also grows around the trees and makes it hard to do any work. But there's also some nicer thorn bushes in here, like uh, there are blackberries, and sometimes there are raspberries and wineberries. Uh, this is the scar of an oriental bittersweet vine that climbed up this tree. And the way this, one of the ways that the vines can kill trees, in particular Oriental Bittersweet, is it, it's like a boa constrictor. It circles the tree and the sap goes up right on the surface level of the tree. And when it grows around the tree, as the tree tries to expand, it can't. And as a result, the sap doesn't flow and the tree dies. This is, a, this is a fairly common problem, and it's one of the more, it's not the most common way for the trees to be killed, but it is a way for trees to be killed. Fortunately, somebody cut this a uh, fairly long time ago, and this tree has survived, but the scar is still there. It's uh, Pachysandra and uh, probably Bo English or Boston Ivy. Pachysandra on the ground and over here, and. English ivy over there, and that's probably English ivy on the tree. There are two different removal processes that have to take place. One is killing, getting rid of the vines, killing them so that 
the trees will be preserved, but also we need to clear the meadows. Either that or plant them with trees, you know, one way or the other. Well, if you look on this tree, you'll see a whole kind of a bunch of hairy structures coming out of it. All these branches, that's not branches of the tree, that's branches of the poison ivy. <laughs> All the low branches that we're looking at here. This, really? this thing that's sticking out here, that's poison ivy. And, and there's no um, leaves? Well, not at this time of year, no. And there's a fair amount of poison ivy in the, in the park. Uh, in, in some of it very near paths. And this tree also has some porcelain berry growing up from down below. And on the left, it has some wild grape. Then if we look over here, we see one of the good vines. It's hard to tell which one it is, but it's the... <laughs> In there, there's a, a brown vine that runs way up there. Doesn't have too many branches, and then you can see there are a whole bunch that run up this tree over here, and that's wild grape. Is it the dark one? It's the brown, yeah, it's dark and it's brown, and it is not hairy, and it just hangs, it hangs in, in midair. It looks almost like, a, almost like a rope or something. And that's one of the things that you'd actually like. That's, the, that's one of the good vines because it doesn't seem to grow in a way that destroys the trees, whereas the other ones do. Now, this is, this is just natural damage to the park, these trees. They fell in a, an ice storm. They're beech trees, both of them. One fell and knocked over the other one. Lose what it looks like. It happened probably during an ice storm. Beech trees can easily fail in, in icy weather icy, windy weather. The history of the park is not that this is a converted woodlands. Most recently, it was Ward Acres Farms. It was a farm. There were horse, there were meadows that the horses were in. And I'm sure that most of these little areas uh, were at one time, not that long ago, less than 50 years ago, cleared and uh, horses were in there. Now these are at least four horse graves here. Uh, Mary Clay Dam of Bellini. Uh, I think this one is like Marcia. This is Bellini, who was apparently uh, an important uh, horse for the Ward Acres farm. And uh, Ethelberta, who was the grandma of Bellini. Apparently Bellini was an uh, important horse to, the, to this farm. Ward Acres Farm still operates today, but it operates in uh, Connecticut now. And this is one of the few parts of the park that the city, well, the city does much by way of maintenance. And they don't do much, but at least they mow, keep the weeds from taking over. Yeah, which they would and, and have most other places. This only looks like this because it gets mowed. If you don't mow it, this, isn't, this is not natural. This is not what a meadow looks like. This is like what a neglected lawn looks like. <laughs> and this is uh, the barn here, the back of it, right? Yeah. And part of the reason why it actually gets mowed is so that when they, they can use this for parking and so that when somebody comes to look at the uh, at the barn, uh, it is not as obvious how neglected the park is. They use it for parking for the uh, for events at the, at uh, Waikagil, 